Vineyards, olive trees, and pasta. Let's talk about spaghetti bolognese. My first exposure to spaghetti bolognese dates from my youth. Like all of my peer group, I was brought up on meat and three veg, and every ingredient was cooked until it was thoroughly dead. But in my late teens, two Italian men opened a small cafe in our locality. It was greeted with some suspicion by my gastronomically uncouth peer group, but since I had been the first to order an espresso coffee, I decided to be brave enough to take the punch. When I got inside, I realised I had no idea what to order. But the proprietor greeted me with a broad smile. You like some spaghetti? Uh, yeah, um, yes, 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 thank you, I said. And soon I was presented with an aromatic dish, which I discovered was called spaghetti bolognese. It was topped with the most amazingly flavoured cheese I had ever experienced. My fumbling attempts to eat it were soon corrected by the proprietor, and I ate it with gusto. I have never forgotten that moment. It changed the way I saw food. Because, you see, the, the patriarchs of my family were a doer and frugal lot. Little wonder. They belonged to a chilly boreal land which gave grudgingly of its sustenance and a people whose national dish was made from the stomach of a sheep. By contrast, mention of Italy conjures up visions of sun-drenched landscapes fruitful vineyard and ancient olive grove, a land populated by equally sunny, laid-back people who have the talent of elevating any simple dish into an art form. I don't know whether Marco Polo gave pasta to the East or stole it from there, but his countrymen have created from it in simple rustic kitchens ever so many voluptuous dishes without fancy equipment, without fancy sauces or secret ingredients. The main ingredients were always lots of care and lots of love and naturally served with love. Please allow my wife Dion to show you how she would present such a dish. You might like to set the scene with a floral table centre such as this. To make this arrangement, I took a round cob of bread and cut off the top third of the loaf. I hollowed it out, just leaving the crust, which I lined with cling film to keep the crust dry. Then a square of wet oasis sponge, making sure it comes just below the rim, so that the flowers will spill over the edge. Always put your greenery into the sponge first. That's much easier than trying to place it in once the flowers are in place. Here I am using grey and green foliage. Now the flowers. I have here some white flowers, roses, chrysanthemums and stock. To set the scene for the spaghetti bolognese which is made with love, I shall put a bunch of uncooked spaghetti on one side and a smaller bunch on the other. Place the lid on top so it looks like a clamshell. If your oasis is well soaked, you won't need to add any more water. Did I say we were going to make it today? No, that comes next time. Come back for the next episode.